Greetings, Benjamin J. from Ben's Trains with another in the series. Well, another arrival from eBay. I just wanted to do an uh, unboxing video. This is a Marx 400 and uh, another $10 locomotive. And uh, as usual, I was the only bidder. So this just arrived. I'm really curious to see what kind of condition it's actually in. I'm not sure how to open this. It wasn't packed very well, I have to say that for it, as you can probably hear. So hopefully it's not damaged. Alright, must be a mystery box. Alright, there we go. Alright. And there it is. It looks like it's reasonably intact. Motor turns, well, it's in fair condition. It's been sitting for decades, it looks like. It's covered in oxide. Wheels aren't damaged, but uh, you can tell just by the contactor. This has been sitting for years and years and years. The uh, coupler is about ready to fall off. And it is the bed part of the... Uh, Mounting plate, floor plate is bent. Anyway, let's see if this is going to run. So let me grab a bottle of oil. I'm going to put a drop of oil directly on the output shaft or on the bearing for the armature on this side and the output shaft and gear on this side. It's really amazing that two drops of oil really just smooth this motor out. All right, let's put it on the outside rail. Before I do anything else, let me scrape this contactor. So a small drop of oil on the contactor. Take a razor blade and scrape this off. It isn't green. It hasn't turned to verdigris yet, but it is just covered in oxide. A lot of times you'll get these things, you put it on the rail and you think it doesn't run at all, but it's actually not getting any power because the contactor is so covered in oxide. It hasn't had a whole lot of runtime, I can tell that. It's been just sitting someplace for years and years and years. You can see how quick you can just scrape this oxide off here right down to bare copper, which is what we want. All right, let me grab a uh, towel, get this oil off the contactor. A drop of oil seems to help. As you can see, took the oxide off. All right, I'm going to put this on the outside rail. Let me grab the camera off the tripod. Now, I bought this just for the motor, so that's uh, what I'm really curious about. Okay, power is on. Let's see what happens. It runs forwards. It only runs forward. Huh, it's still only running forward. So either the E-unit's been bypassed or it's been mechanically blocked. Uh, usually, it will not stay in forward like that. All right, well, it's running, there's no doubt. So uh, let's put it on a consist and see how it pulls. Anyway, like I said, I bought this for the motor. It's gonna be interesting to see how this runs. All right, we know it runs forward. So let's take this around and see how it goes. Well, it was definitely worth the 10 bucks, there's no doubt about that. Whoops, I've just come uncoupled. Like I said, that uh, floor plate is really bent on the rear of this engine. So, let's take this back over here. And the uh, 
coupler is really loose I and mean, just barely hanging on it looks like so anyway I can just drop this motor into another body but I bought it like I said just to get the motor out of it all right let's see if we can get it back to the starting point All right, well, it runs. There's no doubt about that. Like I said, you can see how bent this is. So very likely this happened in shipping. And it was really badly packed. Anyway, take a quick look at this and I'll pull it apart and see if the E unit has been bypassed or if it's mechanically blocked. A lot of the E units, you can stick a toothpick in them if they don't uh, cycle. To get them to run forward, you can just jam that uh, solenoid and uh, keep it running. And uh, I'll have to pull this apart to see if that's what's happened. It's really odd that it doesn't switch back to reverse, which makes me think that it's been mechanically blocked into forward. Yeah. So anyway, I'll pull this apart and see what's uh, going on with it. But it runs the... Uh, body itself it's filthy but there's no appreciable damage to it at all save for that plate being bent and that is really bent as you can tell right there in the center and you can see the uh, coupler is just hanging because it bent exactly where that uh, rivet is anyway it's a single reduction motor in really decent shape with very little runtime. I mean, almost no runtime at all. <coughs> Excuse me. So, like I said, I bought it for the motor. I'll pull the uh, motor out of it and uh, see what's going on with the E unit. It's running. That's the most important thing. It's actually running quite well. Uh, I was pulling, what, 12, 13 cars, I think, with no problem at all. So, two drops of oil. Anyway, I'll pull this apart, clean it up, put a light bulb in it, see what uh, it takes to... Uh, get it running. If I can save the E unit, I will. If not, uh, I'm content with it running forward and I can always put a switch in it. Uh, I've got some, some new switches coming. In fact, I was hoping they were going to be here today, but they didn't arrive. Uh, I'm going to try double pull, double throw slide switches. So, uh, the problem of course is there's no place to go in and buy switches these days. The only place was Radio Shack and Radio Shack is gone. Uh, there's no other place I know of that, uh, sells consumer electronics on that level as far as a double pull, double throw toggle switch or slide switch, micro switches. Radio Shack had all that stuff hanging on a uh, pegboard. Once they went, there's no place I know of where you can just walk in and buy that stuff. No place local anyway. So anyway, uh, 10 bucks on eBay. I was the only bidder. Uh, it's already worth more than I paid for it, just the, the parts alone. And I'll get this straightened out, and uh, hopefully I can get the E unit working. If not, like I said, I'm content with it running forward, and I can always put a switch in it. So I just want to do a, a quick unboxing video. Don't overlook the junk. I mean, it doesn't look nice, but uh, it would take five minutes to plunk this down into some soapy water, <clears throat> get it cleaned up. Uh, it's running, so you can't ask for more than that. And at 10 bucks, it was an absolute bargain. Uh, you'll see these motors on eBay every day, $25, $42, exact same motor. When you can just buy a Mark's 400 locomotive with a full-size motor for 10 bucks, done the same thing, and uh, you've actually got a running locomotive really inexpensively. A few minutes work, in most cases you can get all of these things up and running just like new. So I just want to do an uh, unboxing video. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to drop me an email, benstrains at gmail.com. And as always, thank you for watching.